June 9th marks the release of the long-awaited 1.30 update and the coinciding Emperor DLC for Europa Universalis 4. I'm Chewy, And I'm Quagersaw. And between the two of us, we have 5,700 hours invested into E4 as both fans of the game as well as content creators. Join us as we explore and break down the development diaries and teasers released over the last year and piece together our best look at E4 1.30. This will be through the lens of two players with quite different play styles. This, this is the definitive guide to EU4 Emperor. In today's episode of the Definitive Guide to EU4 Emperor, we will be breaking down some of the most exciting quality of life changes that have been teased in the development diaries. There's been a few changes that you've seen in the dev clashes, but uh, for the sake of this video, we're going to be focusing on the content showcased exclusively the dev diaries. Quality of life changes tend not to warrant as much press as the big major overhauls, but as someone who plays the game 20 to 30 hours a week, I can tell you this is something I'm very excited about. According to the website NeoGAF, quality of life in the context of video games refers to features or aspects of game design that can ensure a player to have a smooth gameplay experience, but also to not get burned out as fast. Anyone who's played late game EU4 to the end, for example if you ever got the just a little patience achievement, you can understand how necessary some of these changes that we'll be discussing are to help maintain your sanity. So let's talk quality of life. For the sake of this video, we'll be grouping the major changes into a few categories. Macro builder changes, AI tweaks, user interface improvements, and a few miscellaneous changes to wrap it up. So, the production interface, more commonly referred to as the Macro Builder, has seen a few additions in the 1.30 update, according to the Dev Diaries. States will now have a dedicated tab in which you can quickly view the status of state development, income, statehood, and current cores. Within that state tab, there will be sub-tabs in which you can view state edicts, view and delegate unique cultural, religious, or national state administrations, such as Pashas, Metropolitans, or Holy Orders, and now you'll even be able to view and manage trade company investments through this interface. The AI of the game has been tweaked a bit with the intention of making AI-controlled nations more competitive, economic management being a priority according to Grugi. A change that many will be happy to hear is that religious convergence should be a more common occurrence in vassal nations without the need to subsidize them for like 30 plus ducats a month. Previously, AI nations would enter wars on your side with the promise of territory but occasionally would refuse to take land in the peace deal, losing trust in the process. This should be resolved in 1.30, where AI will not lose trust when they're not given land if they don't want any that is available at the time of the peace deal. Additionally, AI nations will now only charter trade companies if they have a colonist, eliminating a lot of late game border gore that you generally see along the coasts of Africa, India, Indochina, China, Spice Islands. A lot of tweaks have been made to the user interface, which affects most all facets of gameplay in EU4. Various improvements have been made to the peace deal interface. Currently, if you want to adjust the amount of money being demanded from the enemy, you cannot see whether they would accept or decline without having to move your cursor. Shout out to Arumba's uncovered acceptance indicator mod. The tooltip should no longer cover the acceptance indicator, which is a small change that was previously corrected from a mod, but it won't be necessary anymore, so that's nice. A keyboard shortcut has been introduced, which will allow the player to increase the money demanded in a peace deal up to the amount that the AI would accept automatically instead of having to fiddle with it to find the exact amount. This change should help speed up the process of making peace deals, which is very much appreciated. Selecting provinces from the map during peace deals should be smoother as the ability to select armies and trade nodes, taking you to their respective map modes and away from the peace deal screen, have been removed from the peace deal map mode. This change will also apply to other map interactions, such as giving provinces to vassals, purchasing charter companies, and so on. Although, you may not have to manually give subjects provinces as often in 1.30 due to the fact that subjects will now receive the appropriate liberty desire reductions when receiving a province in a peace deal, as if you had gifted to them at the end of the war. We've reached out for clarification as to if this will also apply your administrative efficiency in such cases. The few changes being made to banner alerts should help cut back on micromanagement. For example, a banner alert will now appear when the Muslim piety interactions are available for use. Innovativeness should also be harder to miss out on due to the new banner alert being introduced, warning you when tech has been taken by another nation, and your chance to gain innovativeness is in jeopardy. There are many more to come, and these are just a few, but the overarching theme with alerts seems to be to minimize the amount of actions to check various mechanics available to the player. Tooltips have received a bit of a buff in 1.30, helping those who may be a bit challenged at quick maths like myself. Yearly relation changes will now appear under the list of modifiers, allowing you to see what the yearly change would be at a glance. A very big change to war declaration screens is the addition of force comparisons between allied and enemy powers. 
Currently landed regiments as well as reserve manpower for each involved nation will be listed out, with no meticulous ledger searching necessary. Devs have voiced interest in a Dead Nation map edition. We're hovering over a Dead Nation's core on a province highlights the rest of their existing cores, though this has not been confirmed as implemented at the time of this recording. A change that has been confirmed is when hovering over a flag of a nation, their borders will be highlighted to easily single them out on the map. Similar to the aforementioned Dead Nation outline, this can be especially useful when trying to find some small nation or nations that have been expelled from their original starting location. When events involving specific provinces happen, the player will now have a button to click that will take you to that involved province, saving you the hassle of having to search for it if you don't know where it is off the top of your head. A definite favorite for those blobbers out there, a new Core All button will be introduced in the overextension management portion of the Stability and Expansion tab. Gone are the days where late game Moogles players will get the hand cramps from furiously clicking Core Province buttons. Some miscellaneous quality of life changes, ones that we felt didn't quite fit into the other categories being added in 1.30, include generals and admirals receiving their own age visible to the player. Leaders that are now made into generals or admirals will no longer suffer from the double death chance check, making it less risky to have your leader lead troops. Endgame tags will now be an option that you can toggle on and off in the pregame options for an Iron Man game. It should be stated though that achievements are disabled with this option. However, it might be worth it if you are looking to do the old-fashioned Ottomans into Byzantium into Rome kind of campaign. Now you can. Is your nation at risk of falling under a personal union upon the death of your 70-year-old monarch? Well, if you have adequate prestige and legitimacy, you can appoint a long-lost nephew to the throne via the shiny new button in the court tab. They'll be advised that the penalties appear to be quite heavy in nature, but likely beat the hard times ahead by falling under a personal union. We don't believe that the AI will use this button, so fishing for PUs is still a viable strategy for Christian nations. If you have a personal union subject, or any subject for that matter, you'll now be able to check the status of their missions. This will allow you to greatly broaden how you utilize vassals via expansion and war, as you can now easily see the requirements to unlock various modifiers for that nation. With the addition of new mission trees in 1.30, understanding how to use them effectively will greatly strengthen any nation who can utilize them. New unique mission trees will be covered in depth in the next video. So this video is a bit harder to organize because it's so much stuff changing and it's really affecting most all corners of the game, but these sorts of things deserve praise. So we hope that it was easy to take in as much of the info as we could. Yeah, the macro builder really has been a huge addition to the game. The fact that they've continued to build on it over the years and integrate more things like diplomacy and mandate to heaven. Now we're getting state mechanics and emperor. Yeah, you can really tell the devs are actively working to streamline the game. I know I personally have been asking for a lot of the changes that we're seeing in this patch. Um, and so seeing them in the dev diaries is awesome to see for me. Definitely. Yeah. What What is actually your favorite macro builder change? I think probably the trade company investments one, because you can make so much more money if you just invest into a trade company, but if you don't know, you don't know. You know, if you- Yeah, if you, it's hard to find them, yeah. Exactly, yeah. What about you? Well, I'm I'm really excited about the edicts. I always leave them on when I don't need to be leaving them on anymore, and it always annoys me because I know that's a bunch of wasted money. Yeah. Um, just having a list of edicts, if you have any on, is, is really nice. I totally agree. Yeah, I've wasted thousands and thousands of ducats from uh, leaving edicts on for no reason, so. I'm super excited about the AI being a little bit better with their debt and with their finances. Having an AI who gets into debt after one war and then he's just basically useless for like 200 years is so annoying. Yeah, for sure. But also, let's not forget about how nice it's going to be to have vassals that will actually convert religions now. Yes. I know it's more of a fix than a change because it was kind of broken in 1.29 or 1.28, one of the two. But... Uh, I've certainly gained gray hairs from AI's lack of conversion. Uh, I know in my um, my third way campaign, I had Najd. He converted like three provinces total the whole time. I ended up converting his provinces for him. So one faith yeah. should be a lot easier come 1.30. So I'm looking, yeah. I'm looking forward so. to trying that out for sure. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the UI changes though. I think it's even more impactful than any mechanics change. It's just going to make the game a lot easier to play for everybody. Yeah. It's a ton of small little things that add up to be a big one for sure. That tends to be the big knock on E4 in terms of difficulty is that like you have to find this menu which leads to this menu which tells you this number which you go check on this screen and so I understand how it can be daunting. But uh, yeah, upgrading the tooltips and the user interface stuff, I think that it really will make the game more approachable while not watering it down, right? Definitely. Which one are you looking forward to? I think probably the core all button is a big one for me because I, I enjoy late game, but um, yeah, it's a lot of clicking. But also the Dead Nation border outliner thing, that, that sounds pretty interesting to me as well. It makes uh, you know releasing uh, vassals maybe a little more yes. easily understandable just from a quick glance without having to click around and check every province. Yeah, that was the one that I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Um, but... 
because uh, I'm really looking forward to that. But I, I have to say the peace deals, just just being able to get the money at exactly how you want it, get provinces to your subjects through the peace deal quicker. It's going to be so nice. Yeah, for sure. For sure. All right. We hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for the next episode. We'll be breaking down the huge and interesting unique mission trees coming in the patch 1.30 and the Emperor DLC. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Definitive Guide to EU4 Emperor. Don't forget to check out the playlist for other videos in the series to keep yourself informed about what to expect in the 1.30 update. Leave us a comment below and let us know what you're most excited about with the coming update and if you learned anything you didn't already know from our video. Please leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it or found any informative value in it and consider subscribing for more informative videos like this in the future. Feel free to check out my channel, it's linked in the description below the video, for plenty of extra EU4 content and let us know if you'd like to see additional videos drilling deeper into the topics we discussed today. 